Enemies to the east. Enemies to the west. Enemies to the south. Enemies to the north. Whatever stands in our way, we will defeat it. We're the last Lannisters. The last ones you count. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms. And I will. The King of the North! Your father and brothers are gone, yet here you stand. Last best hope against the coming storm. If we don't put aside our enmities and band together, we will die. And then it doesn't matter whose skeleton sits on the Iron Throne. The Great War is here. Happy Game of Thrones Day! They finally dropped the Season 7 trailer. There's a new round of the Game of Thrones giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. There are so many big beats here, so I'll talk about all the big stuff, then I'll go through shot by shot. So let's do this. We jump from Cersei, she gets dialogue, then to Daenerys talking about how she was born to rule, Cersei is making war, then Jon Snow talking about the wars to come, even Davos is talking about not coming together, we will fall. The coming darkness is too great, is they show you a bunch of wildlings, including Jon Snow, running through the frozen north. So we're going to be going all over Westeros in ways that we've never seen. That's why they show you the maps at the beginning of the trailer. We saw with Cersei walking into that table room, you get a shot of Grey Worm, the Unsullied, all the different forces. You see the map table at Dragonstone. When she's talking about enemies to the west, you see these ships that's talking about the Greyjoys and their fleet. There's a hand that sticks out here. It's got grayscale. Guess who that is? That's Ser Jorah. He's back. I mean, we knew he was coming back, but it's so awesome that they show that first. Like, they don't show you his face. They show you the hand that's gotten even worse. And yes, I do think that he's going to be a big presence in Season 7, but it looks like he has not found someone to cure that yet. And then, you know, we see Cersei rally herself. We will crush them all as you see all these Lannister soldiers walk by. We've seen Lannister armies, but not looking this awesome so far. You see Jaime standing next to her in the Iron Throne room. Tyrion standing out on the cliffs as he watches the dragons rise up. The dragons have come to Dragonstone. So they raised Balerion the Black Dread, a bunch of other dragons there back in the time of Aegon the Conqueror. So it is a natural roost for dragons. There are caverns beneath Dragonstone. So hopefully we'll get to see them. You see Daenerys touch the beachfront. She's named Daenerys Stormborn because she was born there, but she hasn't been back there since she was a little baby. They fled just as she was being born. You get a better shot of Casterly Rock, the Unsullied just pouring in. So this is obviously on the other side of Westeros. So we're jumping around in time as we jump through the trailer. Then you jump to the shot of Jon Snow at Winterfell, but Littlefinger gets the voiceover whispering in Sansa's ear. You're the last best hope. Your father and brothers are dead. So it sounds like you get a couple shots of him in the hallways. It sounds like he is definitely going to try and get Sansa to move against Jon Snow. Jon Snow looks like he's down here in the crypts getting ready to wreck him next to the statue of his mother that he might not know is his mother yet. So either Littlefinger's gonna play with that idea or Jon Snow is just gonna get tired of his bullshit. But I think that if someone's gonna get rid of Littlefinger, they should give that to Sansa just because it's so much more meaningful to her character. But Jon Snow just ain't gonna be taking anybody's crap. You start getting more shots of the frozen north. This is the gated castle black up at the other side of the wall. You see a shot of Theon that looks like he's on one of these boats in this big explosion here. You see all these big battles going on. This battle at the sea looks like it gets a little help from the dragons just because this ship is burning so fast. More of Arya making her way even further north. A lot of snow on the ground so it doesn't look like it's going to be too long before she arrives at Winterfell. 
This shot of the Dothraki blood riders riding into battle looks like it might also be from this scene here with them on this big field of engagement with Drogon rising behind them. So all the while jumping back and forth between people looking at their maps, making their plans, Daenerys in front of the map table, her ancestor Aegon the Conqueror is the one that had that table built right before the conquest. Not really sure who Arya is trying to find here, but she might actually finally be back in Winterfell looking underneath a bed just trying to find things that she may have hidden when she was a little girl. But one of my favorite shots here is Jon Snow in the firs running through the frozen north. There's supposed to be a really big action set piece set around the White Walkers late in the season. So this is probably what that's from. You get a little Missandei and Grey Worm action and then just riding into battle. The Great War is here. So obviously he's talking about the war with the White Walkers. But you see new costumes for almost everybody. Daenerys at Dragonstone. You see the mountain in a crazy looking Kingsguard version of Cersei's armor that she's been wearing since the end of last season. You get a better look at the dragons and it almost looks like Melisandre is going to be with Daenerys as she's watching them walk up that winding staircase. Now we know where she is. It looks like it's not going to be too long before she gets a reunion with Jon Snow and Sir Davos if he comes to Dragonstone with him. So that reminds you of that Davos line. If we don't come together, put our differences aside, we're all going to be dead. But doesn't that make you wonder what Cersei's final fate is going to be, especially if Daenerys is going to sack Casterly Rock, this place that you thought was untouchable. For most of Tywin's adult life as Lord of Casterly Rock, the Lannisters were untouchable. Then you started seeing a couple of dead children dropping like flies. Jaime got captured, got his hand cut off, so they are being backed into a corner. But the really cool thing about Jaime now is that he's not a member of the Kingsguard anymore. So he is Lord of Casterly Rock and he's wielding Widow's Whale, one of the two Valyrian swords that they reforged from the melted down ice, the great sword of Ned Stark. So there are a couple big reasons why they might have done that. George R. Martin said that in the books, what happened is, is after Joffrey died, they sent that to Casterly Rock. So we might get to see Jamie there. Maybe that's where he grabs that sword. Or maybe Cersei just orders him to start using it. But the really cool thing here is that now that the wars are heating up, we might get a moment where Brienne is forced to fight Jamie with Oathkeeper. So you wind up with a situation with the sword of Ned Stark fighting itself or even if they fight together, you basically have ice between the two of them. So if they're either fighting together, they're fighting against each other. It provides for this really amazing metaphor no matter what. But I'm really hoping that if Cersei goes down and Jamie's the one to do it, he does it with Widow's Whale. How poetic would that be? You get the Valonqar prophecy. Don't know if the show's going to do that, but we can all keep our fingers crossed but ending her with the sword that was forged for her son. But just jumping around in time, you can see that a lot of these conflicts in Westeros, especially Daenerys going after Casterly Rock, looks like it happens relatively early in the season, especially the Greyjoy fights. The stuff that's happening way up in the frozen north doesn't look like it happens till much later in the season. Because of the way they cut the trailer, they talk about enemies all around us will crush them all. So you have all these engagements. Daenerys is mostly focused on taking the Iron Throne. Everybody's concerned with the wars that are happening in the south. They're not really concerned with the stuff that's happening in the north, with the exception of Jon Snow in Davos. Now that we see that Melisandre is with Daenerys, she might try to convince her of the threat of the White Walkers and help bridge the gap between her and Jon Snow. But we also know about Maester Marwyn, who does not appear in the trailer. He helps Samwell at the Citadel. So there are a number of characters that are very concerned with the Great War, in addition to Jon Snow, that can help convey a lot of information to the other characters that don't really know about that yet. Especially Cersei, she has no idea what's going on in the Frozen North. But let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about all this? And what do you think it's going to take to get Cersei to help out with what's going on in the North? Or do you think she's never going to help? Do you think that they're going to crush her and will wind up with a version of Daenerys' vision coming true with King's Landing in the Iron Throne Room just burned to a husk with all this snow falling down? Winter has come. So obviously we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of this in the next couple of bonus videos, but let me know what you want my next Game of Thrones video to be about. That'll probably post in the next couple of days. There's so much to unpack from this and it's just the beginning. You're going to start seeing a lot more of HBO promoting Game of Thrones now that we're heading into the summer. Less than two months to go. We're almost there. So there will be a lot of White Walker things happening in the North and they even used the Night King to promote that motion poster a couple days ago. 
So they really want you to be thinking about White Walkers, even though none of them appear anywhere in this footage. So I'll name the giveaway winner when I post that longer video. While you wait for that, you can click here for more promo breakdowns and you can click here to learn all about what's going on up in the north. Thank you so much for watching. Let's high five. I'll see you guys in a little while.